Hi everyone, welcome back to another video on my channel. Um, I haven't uploaded for a while and I've been having withdrawals from doing nails so I decided last night to um, give my Beyonce hand that I got from Glamourless ages ago um, a new look. Um, this video is in real time. This isn't a particularly exciting set <clears throat> of nails. Um, you know, nothing to, you know, that you've probably not seen before, other people do before or me do before, but I just was dying to do a set of nails and I couldn't really think of what to do and you all know how much I love doing French nails, so I thought I'd make a video of me doing a little French um, mixed design set um, and I just wanted to record something and upload something because I haven't uploaded anything for ages so I thought I'd leave the video into real time um, in case it helps any of you that are struggling with your acrylic French um, I have got other videos where I cover some French as well um, but I think a lot of them have been speeded up so I left this one in real time I'm not sure if I've done one in real time before or not I, I can't remember but I've also got videos um, of me talking through how I paint French sometimes with gel polish as well which is particularly useful if like when we go into lockdown and stuff you end up um, making press on nails because although you can do press on nails with acrylic I've done that before and I find that it kind of like shrinks the sizes and it's just so fiddly with the filing and stuff so if you're doing press ons I'd advise you to try and paint the French if you can just for an easier life um, but yeah so the colour I'm using, I can't remember what colour I'm using here, but it's just like a regular kind of pinky cover pink. Just get rid of that bit of glitter there. Um, and I think the brush that I'm using for this is a size 12. Um, so I'm pretty much drying my beads out when I apply these. Um, I'll start talking about it again on the next now, but because um, I want to build up a wall, which you've probably heard of before. When you're making this smile line you want to have something to push your colour up to or your glitter otherwise you'll file it away there won't be any good structure there or anything like that also i've not glued these tips in so you might see them coming a bit loose and me pushing them back in but it's just because i haven't glued these tips down because i'm trying to give myself an easier life with this hand um so yeah, I'm just putting another bead down here because I'm trying to make sure that I've got um, my structure in kind of with the, 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 how do you call this, the smile line within that pink area because then I don't really have to worry about um, when I'm filing it, filing it away. So right, here we go. I'm doing another fringe on this now, so I'll start from the beginning. So I'm coming in with my first bead which I will have drained the liquid out of, which you wouldn't have seen me do that because I was out of shot to do that. So I'm laying that down kind of near to where I want the bottom of the smile line to be. So I'm just feathering back where I've placed that down. And then I'm gonna kind of tap and pull it down to a point where I want the bottom of the smile line to be. Um, a second ago, I was just kind of trying to measure up against the index finger that I'd done to make sure that I'm kind of getting them in the right place so I'm just using my brush um, to press in the sides of that smile line I'm just again checking kind of wet that they're kind of going to be even so I'm just patting and pressing with my brush to try and shape that bottom bit out this is the most the more most important bead to put down I mean they're all important but this is the one where you really want to get that shape in where you want it because you'll have less filing I am still going to file it to crispen it up but you want to try and do most of the shaping if you can with your brush so I'm just putting my second bead down now to take that uh smile line the nail bed area up towards the cuticle a bit more and again I'm still just using my brush here to try and neaten up those edges and keep the shape even on both sides and I think with this second bead that I've put down, I don't have the height of the walls up there um, yet. So when I come in with my next bead, that's gonna be kind of me building up the height of this nail bed area. 
again I will have drained the liquid out of this bead but um you don't see me do that because I'm out of shot when I do that so I'm just pressing that with behind the back of the bead with the tip of my brush to get the cuticle as flush as I can and then I'm just going to kind of feather the sides down and I've left kind of the bulk of the product at the top you see that where I was pulling it down it was a bit it wasn't I wasn't pulling it straight from the cuticle I was a bit further down so I think I've got quite good height here I think I might come in with another bead just to make to make sure that I've got when it comes to filing I've got my apex where I want it to be sort of in that back third and again I'm just looking to compare the two but as you can see they're not identical it's really hard to get them I completely identical just with applying the acrylic with your brush alone there will have to be some filing if you can do it without any filing and stuff like that then good for you that's a pretty uh pretty good achievement so again yeah i'm putting another bead down just to do my to get my structure where, how i want it and where the so i'm just kind of showing you here the height of them that you can see there i'd say that's about two to three millimeters tall I'd say and obviously like that sounds really thick and it looks quite thick but you're gonna you're gonna file some of that so it's better to have a bit more to file than to have not enough and then have to after filing apply more acrylic and then you've got to file again so just try and save yourself the hassle really um so on this now I thought I would just do a little glitter ombre so I'm just using my cover pink to uh get myself a good base colour down here and I'm going to cap this hole now in clear so I'm not actually worried about making any structure with this cover pink I'm just using it for the colour more than anything else <clears throat> I'm just putting another bead down because I want that colour to be a bit stronger and you can see I'm pretty much dragging the hole colour down from the cuticle because I don't really want to build any apex out of this so I'm going to be using my clear to do that um, and then on the little finger I just decided to do a full glitter now um, I can't remember the name of this glitter <clears throat> it might be like purple crush or lavender crush or something it's one of the glitter the glitter bell ones um, I can't remember the exact name of it but it's one of the purple crush ones from glitter bells and I'm just trying to apply I get it neat at the cuticle and I'm just trying to um, apply it as thin as possible but get quite good coverage um, for those of you that uh, don't know um, this glitter is pre-mixed so I'm not using clear and dipping into a raw glitter this is pre-mixed glitter um, See, I'm just trying to kind of apply it quite thin. <clears throat> I do find with most pre-mixed glitters, you do get quite good coverage. You've just got to make sure that you're not putting it on and then completely wiping it off. That's why I'm kind of using a bit more of a tapping motion here because I'm trying to keep it thin but get the best coverage possible. If you put it on and then just kind of drag it down, you're just going to take 90% of the glitter off anyway and then it's just a waste of product most of it's going to end up on your paper towel so i'm adding my glitter to this ombre nail now um, <clears throat> so I'm kind of putting it pretty much at the tip of the nail and then I'm going to gently drag the glitter upwards um, for those of you that haven't done this before if you're wanting to do glitter ombres um, you want to obviously have less of the glitter towards the top you want to kind of try and blend it out if you know what I mean you don't want it to look like a weird French where it's there's suddenly glitter and then it stops and then it's just your cover pink you kind of want to like fade it up if you know what I mean so I'm just adding a little bit more to the very tip there just to make it um, as opaque as possible 
And I know not everyone likes to do their glitter ombres like this. Some people like to do it as if you're doing a solid colour ombre. Some people like to put the glitter down first and then put the cover pink on the top. Personally, I don't think that it looks as nice. Um, so I don't mean to offend anyone if that's the way that you prefer to do it. Um, it does still look nice when people do it like that, but I just prefer um, the way that this looks. Um, I have done a couple of sets where if people have had a design set like the one I'm doing here and then they come for a fill and they just want to fill that design, I do the, when I fill in their cover pink at the top, it does kind of go over the glitter a little bit. So without filing it away, like the whole thing, like you do a redesign, I'd end up, you know, just kind of going over the glitter a bit. So I don't really mind in that situation, but on a fresh set, I like to do it with the glitter over the cover pink. So yeah, I'm just filing my smile lines now and you'll see when I started to file this nail, just before I done it, I tapped it with my file. I was listening for that clicking sound. Um, so you know that the acrylic's set and hard because it's making that tapping noise. Um, so yeah, I'm just filing those edges and tapering them in and then coming around the bottom point part of that smile line, trying to make it even. So I'm constantly going from each side because I want to make sure that I'm not over filing one side and then it's not even to the other side. So I dust it off and have a little look. I'm going to compare the two. I'm just looking at all angles really. Obviously this is a fake hand, you wouldn't bend your client's fingers back the way that I am here, but Beyonce is very flexible. Her bones are like jelly. <laughs> um, so now I'm filing the middle one and you can see me pushing the tips back in there because when I file it kind of like they come loose. Um, you can stick these down. This is a, a Glamour Liz half hand that I've had for quite a while now. Um, and I really want, she does the full poseable hands now, but they're like, um, oh, how much are they? I think they're like, I think they're nearly 200 quid. I know, I think on her website, if, they're, if you're looking in American dollars, I think they're almost about $250. And I do think that they would be worth the money. Like this one was expensive and it was worth the money. You know how it is, like you get something and then the new version comes out and you want the new version. Maybe one day I'll treat myself, but at the moment I just cannot justify spending the money on it. There's so many things I want at the moment as well. Like Katie Barnes has bought something out that I want to buy. And I'm just trying to like not go crazy and order myself loads of stuff because, you know, Christmas has just been and things like that. So yeah, I've, I've filed both of those and I'm just comparing them. And I think here, I'm not quite happy with the way the index one looks now. I think it's not quite as tapered in as the the middle one. So I'm just gonna try and kind of see if I can even it out here with my metal hand file. If you do lots of filing work like this, I'd recommend getting one of these metal hand files. Like it's such a good thing to have. Like I find uh, since I've had this hand file, like I don't use the other hand files as much. I, I sometimes do, but this one's like so rigid that you know you don't get that bend and it allows you to get a better shape, I think. So now I'm just applying my um, my glitter bells, um, purple glitter. Purple Crush or Lavender Crush, whatever it's called. Um, and yeah, I'm just kind of, again, trying to get quite good coverage with it, but keep it thin at the same time. So I'm gonna be coming in with a few beads on these. My camera's gone a little bit blurry there. I think it's about to come back into focus at any second now. Um, also, you'll see that while I'm trying not to work too messily, some of it does go over um, the smile line. Um, if you've watched my other videos or videos of other people doing French like this, um, you'll know that we usually say don't worry about it because you're going to file that anyway because you've made it tall. Um, <clears throat> so when you file it, you'll file away those little bits of glitter or if you're using a colour, you'll file away the little bits of colour. So yeah, don't worry about it if it goes over the edge too much. Obviously, if you are getting bored and you want to <laughs> skip towards the capping or whatever, go ahead and skip through the video. 
Um, I know sometimes it can get a bit boring if it's like not sped up. That's why I speed up a lot of my videos because I don't know if people like longer videos or shorter videos. I, I don't really know. Um, people say that, oh, you should do young, longer videos for YouTube because it's better for your reach or whatever. I don't really know how these things work. I try my best to get my stuff seen, but sometimes it doesn't always work. But yes, I'm just applying my glitter to the French again, exactly the same as I've done in the last one. Um, if I've forgotten to mention anything in the video that you particularly want to know about, um, or you want to request me to record another kind of video, um, please let me know in the comments because I'm always open for suggestions and I want to be able to make my channel a bit better. I want to be able to create some videos of me doing some like different kinds of designs because I feel like a lot of the work that I do is always stuff that like someone's done before. I don't think I'm very good at like, you know, I can do like this kind of standard thing where I think like, oh yeah, I want to do a fringe or a marble or that's kind of stuff. But like, I really wish I could be one of those now techs where people just like make something that you've like never seen before and then suddenly everyone's doing it. I'd love to be able to come up with something like that, but I just feel like my brain is not capable of thinking of anything that genius. <laughs> um, I'm always sort of like looking for inspiration and stuff like that. So hopefully I'll be able to make some more exciting videos soon, but hopefully you're watching this video not thinking this is boring. Hopefully you're watching my videos because you like them. <laughs> I've noticed as well, my subscribers, as they're going up, I'm getting a lot more of the... I kind of delete them, like, because... Maybe I'll get to the point where I can't be bothered to delete, delete the comments, but because I'm on that cusp of not having, like, a ridiculous amount of subscribers, but I've still got quite a few, I'm, like, I'm, like attracting the trolls <clears throat> that, like, leave... Um, not like nasty, nasty comments, but you know when people like, Ew, you shouldn't do it like this, you should do it like that, or, you know, just like all, all like spammy comments and stuff, and I'm like just deleting them off, and yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's kind of annoying. Um, yeah, so here I'm just showing you kind of the, the, the thinness of where the glitter is and um, what they're looking like so far. And now I'm gonna cap them in clear. The brush that I'm using here is a size 14 and I never use a size 14 brush. I just thought because these um, nails are quite long I thought I'd just and my 14 brush was sitting there and it never gets used and I thought oh do you know what I'm just gonna give it a bash. Um, it was okay. I'm definitely not used to using it maybe I need to use it a bit more. I mean I don't really think like a giant brush like this is totally necessary to be honest like when I bought it, I thought, like, you know, when you see those videos of people doing, like, the one ball method and it looks absolutely amazing and really satisfying. And they make it look so easy as well. And that's why I got this brush. So I was like, yeah, if I get a massive brush, I'll easily be able to do a one ball method. Yeah, could I fuck? <laughs> um, it's actually really difficult. Like, yeah, you might be able to lay down a bead of acrylic in, in one, but... Like, if you can get your structure in that as well, correct, so like, well done, well done you, because it's actually really hard. There's only one person that I know and have seen her do a one ball method and her structure is perfect, like, it almost looks like it doesn't even need filing, and that's Kerry Reese. Um, a lot of you will probably be familiar with her. If you're not, check her out because her videos and her work's always amazing. Like she does brilliant designs and her videos of her one ball method are mega satisfying. But <laughs> I saw her do it. I was like, yeah, I can do that. And yeah, I can't. <laughs> uh, maybe if I practiced, but you know what I mean? I just, maybe I'm just too lazy to keep practicing that kind of thing. I just want to focus on getting them perfect. Um, perfect looking without messing them up especially like on my clients like I'd hate them to be like thinking sat there thinking what on earth is she doing to me <laughs> anyway so <clears throat> when I've capped these um French nails obviously you've seen I've not quite gone I've not gone like I've not capped like that nail bed area I'm literally just capping where the glitter is um and I've had to use a couple of beads to do this and yeah, I'm just uh, tapping and pulling that acrylic down. I'm trying not to make it too, too thick because 
obviously you don't want to be filing until the end of time you know but these are all things that I think you know if you're just starting to perfect your French if it ends up looking a little bit thick at the end it's better than it not being thick enough you know like I used to hate doing French like when people used to ask me for acrylic French I'd shit myself I'd think oh shit but now it's like my favourite thing to do I absolutely love it it's funny how things change like that so yeah, here we go, right, so I'm, this is me trying to do a one ball method, like, I think that's quite a big bead that I've picked up, but maybe I was being a little bit of a scaredy cat about it, but, I, and I drained the liquid out, and I don't know if it's because I had the heating on, because it's obviously winter, it's freezing, I don't know if it's because I had the wheat heating on, or because I drained too much liquid out, but I'm trying to, like, I've, like, put the bead down, and I'm like, yep, yeah, sweet, I've got the bulk of it at the back, just drag the rest down, and pat and press, and I couldn't get my bead to go much further, so I feel like I kind of didn't really, I did not achieve what I wanted to <laughs> here because although I've got the bulk of the product where the apex needs to be, I didn't get it to cover the whole now. Like I've got to come in with another one or two beads. So might as well have just done that normal, <laughs> a normal free bead method. But hey, everything's worth ha having a go at, isn't it? If anyone watching is a master at the one ball technique, let me know. Let me know in the comments. Hit me up with your Instagrams or your YouTubes if you do videos as well. But yeah, I admire anyone that can smash out a one ball method and it looks amazing. <laughs> So I hope you've all had a nice Christmas. Um, yesterday it was Boxing Day. Um, that's the timeline events while I'm doing this voiceover. Um, I'm so full. I've eaten so much. But it, obviously, like with this lockdown, because I'm in Tier 4, I wasn't really able to see anyone. So it's just me and Ross. And it's one of those things like, everything you buy is like for more than like one or two people, pretty much. So like, I haven't... I've got like loads of crackers and cakes and things like that. But I've actually now run out of like you know like i'm gonna have to go out later to get um i don't know something to shove in the oven for dinner because i've had a few takeaways lately um but i've just got so much stuff in the cupboards like crisps chocolate and obviously people buy you chocolates which i'm not complaining about because it's always nice to have chocolate in the cupboard to be honest um <clears throat> But yeah, I hope everyone's had a nice Christmas, despite it be probably being the worst Christmas that people have had. Um, it's a difficult time for so many people. Like I reckon some people must be feeling really lonely, like haven't seen their families for ages and or their friends, especially if like you live alone and stuff. So if you are feeling a little bit low or having a bit of a crap time, then you know my message is always open. Um, I'm always up for chatting and making new friends. So drop me a little message or a comment or whatever. Follow me on Instagram. I'm pretty active over there. Not so much Facebook. My notifications are crap, but I'm always on Instagram because it's like addictive. <laughs> so yeah, you can always get hold of me there. Um, but yeah, so here I am capping my full glitter now and I'm oh I swapped my brush out actually for this just to let you know you can probably tell anyway um I'm back to just using a size 12 here and I'm just doing a regular um three ball method where I started at my tip now I'm doing my little middle structure bead my second bead and then I'm dragging that and blending that into the first one that I put down and then I'm going to come in with my cuticle bead so yeah, I had to change back to a uh, size 12, which is still quite a big brush, but these are not long nails. Um, I do have a variety of brush sizes. I've got like an eight. I think I might have two eights actually. I've got a couple of eights, a couple of tens. I've got a 12, I've got that giant 14, which I never use. Um, and I've got my Prohesion brush, which I don't actually know like what the actual size is because it's like their own size. It's called a Pro Grip 9, which I've never seen that you can get a size 9 acrylic brush from, but it is a really good brush. I love it. And it's, yeah, kind of in between. So, yeah, always have like different size brushes because obviously, if you're doing really tiny nails with a massive brush, it's just a waste of product. It's harder work, blah, blah, blah. 
so yeah anyway so this is a uh, oh i'm just pushing one of the nails back in and sit down this is what they look like all capped so they're looking a bit sort of shapeless and a bit you know but yeah oh i applied so i filed off camera because it's easier and i applied crystals which i was meant to film but i forgot so i applied crystals and little caviar beads and cured them and now i'm just showing you me adding the top coat to bring that glitter to life um, these are Swarovski crystals, so I'm trying to not go over them with my top coat. So I was scratching my nose there. Um, but yeah, oh my god, like the news about Swarovski, they're not supplying to nail techs anymore. They're not supplying their smaller batches because I think they want to go more luxury or whatever, which basically to me says, don't sell Swarovski crystals to the commoners. Um, which is really sad, but I'm going to use up all the Swarovskis that I've got. If I am able to buy more, maybe I will. If there's alternatives, I'll buy those. Oh, it's just a shame, really, like, because they are so pretty. But hey, I'm sure, you know, this will be a good um, opportunity for all the crystal brands to actually probably now develop their own uh, crystals or whatever, or source some from some other companies to give some other people to take the spotlight in nail world with the crystals rather than Swarovski running the show and it's now they've ditched us I don't think they really deserve all the hype that they get but anyway so um obviously just around like the, the crystals around the cute area I always do this I always use a little striper or detail brush whatever you've got to hand um to just apply the no wipe top coat around the crystals at the top just to kind of form that seal all around them Ah, oh, it looks so nice watching that. This is actually quite a good top coat in video. Sometimes I find like the, the glitter doesn't really show very well when I'm top coating in a lot of videos, but in this one they really did. So I was quite pleased with that. See, I'm just going around the top of that crystal there with my no wipe on a little brush. And then I'm gonna put the top coat on the rest of the nail. I think on this nail, I actually stop halfway down to show you the yeah, look at that. <laughs> top coat porn. Um, so yeah, uh, this is a no wipe top coat. I think this is my gel bottle extreme shine. It's like my go-to no wipe top coat. I love it. So cured that um, for 60 seconds. Here's what they're looking like. I've left a little clip. So if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, say hello, make any suggestions if you want. Follow me on Instagram. That's my handles there, Dream Nails by MC. And hopefully I'll see you in another video soon. Bye.